time to get started. Okay, so we're at that seven week mark where I want to start getting some stuff started because I have a lot to get started as what you've seen when I dropped them all on the table here. So what I did was I recently just ordered in Bootstrap Farmers trays. If you've never heard of Bootstrap Farmers, they're gaining a lot of popularity because their trays are a lot more rigid. They're made of stronger plastic. Um, these literally feel like those like black and yellow storage totes you buy at Lowe's. This is super, super rigid. I mean, it's thick. You can hear it. Um, I did purchase for this reason the 128, ooh, sorry, 128 count cell trays because I have so many seeds to get started and I need so many plants this year. I don't really need so many plants, but I want so many plants this year that I went ahead and ordered these. These are very, very rigid. Um, now the points here, they're, they're thick, but they're still like malleable to where you can, you're not gonna be able to push up. Now I have seen, and I'm not quite sure if this is from Bootstrap themselves or not, there is a peg system that you can purchase that you place on the table. And when you take your tray, you place it right on top and every little peg pops in one of these holes and pushes your seedling up. I'm gonna double check to see if Bootstrap has that or not. If it's not through them, um, this might be something that I have to make, which is not what I wanna do. Um, but in the meantime, that would be a really great time saver when it comes to potting these up or taking these outside. So like I said, we're at seven weeks from our last frost. Today is our coldest point in March as of right now on the um, forecast thing by month. I'm using AccuWeather to kind of watch. And we are at a high of 29. The rest of the month, we're in 40s and 50s and upwards to 60s. Going into April, we're going to be in 60s again. Um, our nights are still not frost-free. We are dipping into the 30 range, which is to be expected. But I'm surprised at the, the temps right now. Not out of the woods yet to just be running out there and hardening these off. But at least for today we're going to get as many of these seeds started. Since I'm in the basement, our furnace was running. I went ahead and we're already losing seeds. Ow! In the meantime, I've already filled up one of these. So 128 cells, this is pretty good. So I'm actually using my ironing board right now as my, my table. Get to overlook my plants down here. And uh, my seedlings are here in the back. You can kind of see the tray right there and down there. I'm battling aphids. Aphids are actually super easy to get rid of. You just have to stay on top of them. So I did a insecticidal soap on the seedling today. I'm, I'm praying these little buggers go away because I've already lost five of my baby salvia plants. And I've, I've only got, you know, 80 some of them to start. But let's um, let's stay optimistic and let's just jump right into this. So I have a number of seeds within this category that are going to start it. So I'm just going to kind of run through them. Get a, I'll show you an update on the seedlings over there of what we have. And then I'm going to do some planting up. And then that should finish this video. So I was sent some honeywort seeds. This is purple tear. I collected some milkwood. This is the Harry Balls milkwood. This one actually just got mixed in there. I have some Black Knight Pincushion Scabiosa, which I actually have, I ordered some of that in from Redemption Seed. I was also sent some Crespedia. I've grown this last year. This was actually a really cool plant. Um, I put it in kind of un, not so good conditions and it just, I didn't really get the full effect. It really needs full sun, not part, part sun. Um, this is the Alaskan Burnet that we talked about in my How I Design video. Um, I'm going to get this started because I'm really excited about this. Agastache Korean Zest, Agastache Coronado Seeds, I believe this is a, yes, orange red flower blossoms. I have some nasturtiums left over. These are the variegated variety. 
Crocosmia. This is a um, dwarf Crocosmia. So these ones only get about three foot tall. Um, the flowers last a lot longer on these varieties than um, the taller variety such as Lucifer. So I've really been gravitating towards these and they're easy to mix into borders. Really long lasting. I'm not quite sure what color this one is. I think it might be an orange. Um, I have two packs here of Mahogany Splendor Hibiscus. I want to have some fun with this this year and use this as a hedging plant. We have some Red Robin Basil. I'm doing Tobacco Hot Chocolate. This is Nicotiana Hot Chocolate. This is really, really pretty. I've grown um, Bella before, Lime Green, and the tall fragrant Nicotiana. I can't remember the name of that one. I've done those ones. I actually really love Nicotiana, but I thought this one was super cool. Um, I've got two packets of straw flowers here, a purple red and a copper red. Thai basil, great filler plant. I really love it. Smells really good. Blooms are really pretty as well. Scabiosa Ace of Spades. This one is darkest, almost black double pincushion. My furnace is about to kick on again. I don't know why. Argeratum Red Flint. I collected some tiny vinca seeds. We'll see what these are. These are a Monrovia annual from last year. Super cute, we'll see what happens. I have Gumfrina Fireworks. I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna be starting that one this year. White Basket Flower, Cardinal Basil, Black Opal Basil, Lion's Ear, or Clipadaga. Never grown this, think it's kind of cool looking. Um, last two are Scabiosa. Bougelet's Bonnets. I don't know if I said that right. And I love these marigolds. These are the French vanilla marigold. No, strawberry blonde marigolds, French vanilla. I do have French vanilla seeds, but I'm not growing those this year. So let's just dive right into this and see how much I can get started. Real quickly, I did forget to mention um, domes. So with the bootstrap containers, the bootstrap cells only fit into their trays. So you're gonna to have to purchase trays when it comes with it. Um, but the good thing is, the domes that I purchased from a local garden center actually do fit right on top and they are perfectly fine because of the lip that is here. It'll hold in enough humidity to get my seeds started. So some savings there. The ones on their website are about, I think about like $6 a piece. These ones I paid like $2 for. They're really rigid, they're worth it. Um, but the trays themselves, I'll be able to get years out of. So it's worth an investment. So this is no good. I am already out of space and I said I was only allowing myself four trays this year and now I'm up to nine and a half. And I actually have at least like two or three more trays to go worth of stuff. So time to do something to fix this. So you just saw me take down the current lights that I'm using under those temporary shelves for housing plants, the other ones. So these are them. They are a 48 inch long, 48 inch long tube light and they're filled with LEDs. <clears throat> now these ones do come with up each end connectors that you can link them together and then they have an option to run these four at a time or ever how many you want. Um, and they come with two sets of cords. They're like $56 on Amazon. I will post a link 
if I can get it, for some reason, every time I try to send it to somebody, I can't get this link to come up, so I just have to screenshot it. But um, I will do my best to get the link in the description for that. These are 48 inches long and you get eight tubes for $56. The other thing that you're going to need in order to install these onto any type of piece of wood are these. These are pipe clamps, half pipe clamps. So you'll need these to slide up on them. This is a one inch, which is works pretty good. You could go up to the next size if you really want it to. It is going to bend that screen, but the way that these LEDs are sitting, they're right in here on that heat sink that this is. So you really don't have to worry about it. Um, but if you're gonna be going into wood or you need some type of mounting option, even like a metal screw, these will be your best bet to hold them up. What I'm switching them out for are, These. So these are 36 inch units. They run about $80. Um, so they're a little more expensive, but the perk is, if you can see this, where with the other one, there's only one stripe of LEDs. These come with two. So realistically, you don't need that. You can span this amount out farther than the, the eight. Um, so that is one big plus to that. And it comes with these mounting brackets. These are the, oh, these are the mounting brackets. They're little clips. They come with screws. All you do is attach it to where you need to and clip it in. And then to easy release, you just pop the little tab on the side, the little flipped up part, and they come right out if you need to move them. So that's really handy. <clears throat> I have to say I'm pleasantly surprised with these. Uh, they are super bright. I might actually have to do some adjusting on my plants because I don't know if those plants are going to be equipped to handle this. It might actually scorch them. So we might have to put these on a separate timer to um, bring them down a couple hours because this might be too intense for them. But let's dive in because I have to get the second, another shelf built to put on top of these, this area so I can then get more seedlings going because I just realized I forgot to get my tomatoes started but I thought I could start them four weeks before and then that was not right and then So can you see them? I only, I, I did four. There's four units there. Obviously I came up short right in here. That is fine. Magically, I don't have that many plants that needed to be under there, even though I did just the other day, probably because I placed a bunch of them upstairs in throughout the house. So um, I've got a number of mangabes here. Those are the Hertz Garden plants that I ordered in. Only the Golden Shadows is the only thing that has not um, I want it to leaf out. I think that one's going to be a dud. There's some succulents, another mangave, a little bit of agave and sedums, some um, vining tradescantha, uh, wandering jew, plectranthus, coleus, and then some other stuff. And look how beautiful these begonias are. Ugh. Anywho, so now that all of the lighting is situated and it looks like an electrical fire down here, I think it's best that we get the other rack put on. I have the frame for it. I just need to get new legs to be put on it. And then we have plywood out in the garage. I'm just gonna get cut. And this should be, and hopefully will be, the last year for this entire setup. So I did not film everything to save you guys some time, but we got all the seed trays down there that we just did, plus one more up there. Um, I did get the other lights mounted. I do need to cut these uh, banisters off. These were like, there's like $3 at Lowe's if you need those, they, they're they great to attach those to. Um, but then I cut another piece of plywood, threw it up here and then moved these lights up here. These are just regular shop lights that I picked up. I think I got these at Walmart at one time. Two tubes, single lights, they'd work great. Here's our other uh, thing of 
seedlings. We ended up, who's we? We, I got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 19 varieties of seeds started today, so that's great. This is our Stepia tenuisium. It is a drought tolerant grass that is super, super pretty, called Mexican feather grass. It is allegedly hardy here, so we will see. I'm gonna put it in a super dry, well draining, full sun spot, and let this beast have at it this year. But I think it's getting to the point where it needs to be potted on, cause let's see if I can get this to adjust here. They're starting to bulk up pretty good already. I mean, and that's just one seedling. Now I did spread 500 seeds through here because I planned on putting at least five of them to a pot. Now I'm thinking I, you know, don't need that many, maybe 50, maybe 100 plants, we'll see. Anywho, in the time being, they're doing really good and they're growing on right there. And then we have our pepper seeds. There's some hot and sweet. Primula by Ali, look how good these little guys are doing. We are down to four Himalayan blue poppies. I've got two that are doing really well, and then this one's trying to catch up. That one's lagging behind, but the primulas are doing absolutely amazing. I'm super, super happy with those. Um, these are prairie drop seed. Notoriously hard to get going from seed, but eh. this is like a snapdragon vine. I was sent these um, by a friend. Then I have two sets of purple ball vines going. These are really, really um, starting to like get going now. Some of them are still trying to get rid of their um, seeds off the top of them. This is a butterfly pea seed. I'm still waiting for five more to get going. This is where we're battling aphids. These are my salvias that are taking a hit right now and some of them are losing, so I've been plucking them out. I am going to get these little buggers handled here in a few minutes. Some black cotton back there and actually three of them are green. Some korbaki peppers. Then we have jigsaw peppers. You should take a look at these. Oh, they're very beautiful, but they're like intense heat they come out variegated. The leaves are like white and purple. Um, and then what else? We have a couple more salvias back there and then these are our tiger eye violas. So all in all, not a bad day. We got our second rack put up. We've got all our lights switched out. We had a ton of seeds started. I was gonna take you on a little bit of a journey to getting my cannas and dahlia sprouted, but I'm gonna save that for the next video. We're gonna get them pre-sprouted because I wanna get cuttings off of the dahlias possibly. And then just because cannas are super easy to keep going during um, cold times, even through the entire winter, um, I'm gonna show you just the process that I go through that. So until the next video, we'll see you then, bye.